Um, from a cross-contamination perspective, this is from a manufacturing standpoint. So again, small amounts do cause reactions. And we're going to hear what two manufacturers do in order to mitigate that. You know, that there are concerns about that at every stage, and that there's a difference between dedicated and the co-packing plants. So, you know, do you have shared or dedicated facilities? There's a lot of manufacturers that have been tested, and Kelly can attest to this, as far as with allergy-free foods. They've been, they've been tested for six years in a row. They're free from all the allergens. They've never had any cross-contact, cross-contamination come up. That's because, and even though they're in a shared facility. So again, it depends on the manufacturing process. You know, what are the ingredients? The only thing I wanted to point out about ingredients, unfortunately, is sometimes from a label, that the ingredients are different from the different size of the same product. So you may have this size that's made from specific ingredients. When it comes to the food service side, it could be different. So just as a heads up to everybody. Making sure that you have control policies in place and SOPs, obviously good manufacturing practices, and then we talked about the gluten-free testing. And I think what, what I want to do is I want to bring it over to the processors and talk about cross-contamination in your plants and what both of you do in order to eliminate any of that. If things are designated, uh, separated out, uh, if it's a spice blending room, uh, where they might be mixing different ingredients, anything that contains soy or dairy or anything, there's a allergen labeling code system, it's all a color code system. Any product coming in is tagged with that specific color code that relates to that item. And then when it gets into the spice blending room, everything is totally separated. That bin is only for that allergen to scoop the process. And then also through our scheduling for processing, everything follows a flow of the allergens uh, in, a, in an order. We start with an all natural, no allergen uh, products at the beginning of the day, and run those, and then as the day progresses, you may pick one up with soy, and you may run soy for the remainder of the day, or you may wind up running one that's a combination of soy and dairy. You know, just, just in stages, and, and that's how we regularly keep things segregated in the process. Excellent. And then Kelly, even though you're allergy-free, that you have to go through a lot as far as from a cross-contamination perspective as well. Yes, our breading for the chicken is actually made in a dedicated facility. We still test that product. We send it off to Silver to make sure there has been no one in the plant. Uh, there is a, we have our processing plant that runs conventional chicken and we shut that plant down for three days for a cleaning process. Uh, every nut, every bolt, every ventilation is tested. We send that off to Silver. Once we get clearance for our runs, then we start on that Monday. Uh, we ask that our employees do not eat anything that morning with any gluten. None of the allergens that we claim to not have. Um, and then we start the process and then we have a testing phase that as the product's being ran, then we have that sent off, wait for those results, and then we start again. Once the product is completed, we then quarantine the product, we send it off to Silicon to be tested, and once we get clearance from them, then we can ship the product. 